Today's episode, we're going to talk about Greenbug, Archimedes Screw, and Waterford, Ontario, where we're at the demonstration site for making electricity from small streams, but also making the product and the knowledge. And we have Mike Book, the former head of the Ag Energy Co-op, and the product make, being made just outside of Tilsonburg, Ontario. So this product will solve a lot of problems in rural areas all around the world. We do everything. So we literally design everything. We manufacture it all. Like we manufacture the screw in our facilities. We will do the environmental approvals. We do the electrical approvals. We install it. We commission it. We operate it. We maintain it. And so it's because of those things that we can sort of reduce some of those costs. We decided to use the Archimedes screw because it's robust. It's used as in water treatment plants to pump sewage. So the reason that's important is because we wanted micro hydro to be feasible and we can't we didn't want something that would be a high maintenance. Our, our models are the core of our business. So it allows us to come in and assess the site very quickly. Something that if you take engineers to do would take a you know five engineers like five months to do. And that would not make a project feasible. Whereas if we can basically have a, a model to plug in some data, hit solve and it will not only tell you what size of system to put in, it structurally engineers it, does the financial projections, the whole thing. So automatically we've cut the timeline down and the cost down. So you don't have to be the developer, you don't have to fork out the initial investment. We can lease your site, pay you for your site, and we'll develop it. And you get a percent of the revenues, and then after you after commissions, you can also buy into the projects. It generally though, the, the bigger it is, the economics get a bit better. But we're at, we're, at, we're at the really small end of things. Uh, we're in micro hydro, so you know, 100 kilowatts, 150 kilowatts. It's sort of like the upper end, which is still considered very, very small. When you consider the average wind turbine out there is like maybe two megawatts or 2,000 kilowatts. But we're like talking of maybe our biggest system would be 100, 150 kilowatts. There's a, a big interest for this type of thing for our off-grid systems or I want what I say mean by off-grid is sort of our self-contained type systems for remote communities like northern communities in Canada or remote tourism operators where you can power a small town. This is our first test site that's sort of up a commercial scale. Okay. This, is, uh, this is the gear motor that's at the top of our turbine, our Archimedes screw. This is a three-phase industrial motor. We've got a brake on the back of it, the brakes for safety. If the grid goes out, the brake is actually released by electricity so that if the grid goes out, the brake will release and it'll stop the turbine from rotating. In front of the motor, we've got a gearbox. The motor runs at 1800 RPM. The gearbox converts the slow rotating speed of the turbine at approximately 40 to 42 RPM to 1800 RPM at the generator. Now the way that the system operates is when the power is turned on, the brake is released, the turbine is allowed to freewheel. Once the encoder on the back of the brake, the encoder measures shaft speed, it'll see that the RPM is above 1800 RPM on the motor. Once it's above 1800 RPM, it'll pull in the contactor and it starts to produce energy at that point. Uh, the way that the water enters the system is underneath where I'm kneeling right now, there's a channel that's about 10 feet deep, 7 feet wide, and 50 feet long. And that channel is connected to the reservoir, the high side of the, of the uh, dam. The water comes through this channel, around the corner underneath this building, and it comes into the, the filling point of the screw here. The water actually comes beside the dam, goes through our turbine, and the water re-enters right at the base of the dam, the very same as if it was going over the dam anyways. So we don't consume any water at all through our process of generating power. About oh, a year ago, I got contacted by Brian from Greenbug, and they're putting in a pretty sophisticated system where the intake of the water and that now will be computer operated. So this will give us natural gas and water powered electricity for a little greener farm operation. We have seven residences on the farm, so that takes lots of gas, as well as the arena to train the horses. So. This is a nice plus. It's been fun for me because I enjoy uh, the way they've been designing things and making things from scratch. And uh, 
that's that's part of the experience. We believe we could make, a, or honestly believe we could make a difference in micro, as opposed to the big projects where uh, you need a lot of capital and so on. We thought our little projects under 250 kilowatt would allow us to do things um, in Ontario, across Canada, North America, and internationally. We are thinking uh, thinking globally. If we can make micro hydro uh, uh, feasible uh, financially, then we can make a difference where there's 1.2 billion people in the world that don't have electricity. And most of them are in the rural communities. And rural communities, many are by water. In um, countries where there's a, a developed grid, we can sell systems to them. And where they don't have a grid, we can sell off-grid systems to those people. I think we're going to change a lot of biases out there that have said, look, microhydro's not possible. And, and we're proving that it is possible.